Live across North Texas and beyond, this is the Jenna Ryan Show. Ain't that America for you and me? Ain't that America for houses for you? Jenna Ryan is a world-renowned speaker and thought leader. Ranked in the 87th most influential person online by Fast Company Magazine, Jenna Ryan has spoken to thousands around the world and is now speaking to you. So with all things real estate and beyond, here is Jenna Ryan. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Jenna Ryan Show. So glad to have you listening today on this crisp winter day. It's The weather is really changing, isn't it? It's uh, cold outside, but we're warm in our hearts, and we're so glad to have you. Today we are talking, I have some amazing guests, and we're going to be talking about first-time home buyers and credit repair, um, coming back if you've had a foreclosure or bankruptcy, and also getting situated if you want to buy a home for the first time. I have two amazing guests with me today. Um, first is Stephen Palmieri. I've known him for years. He is the best honey badger in the whole world. If you have not seen that video, you need to watch the video. He's the one who introduced me to the honey badger honey video. Badger. Yeah, honey badger don't care. He's just trying to buy a home. Yeah. Honey badger don't care. He doesn't let anything stop him. Nothing at all. Good to see you, Jenna. Thanks for having me. How are you doing today? Fabulous. So good to see you. And and he, um, Stephen does credit repair. He's with Innovation Services. And tell us what you do for home buyers. Sure. So Innovation Finances, we do a number of things. We do have our licensed credit repair company as well. And so we are authorized to, to help individuals improve their credit. And so for our audience today who's trying to buy a first-time house, you know, you have to figure out what is it that's keeping you from getting the loan, right? Right. And there's a number of things that we can look at in that. But you know, is it, do you not have enough credit? Uh, is your credit maxed out? How long have you been on the job? And so what we can do is we kind of fill that that hole between the realtor and the lender to find out from your underwriting perspective, right? why are you not getting a deal done? And we can help to try to fix fix things to get you into the house. Right. So you can help repair credit, help people get their debt levels down, and help them just do all kinds of things in order to get into their home. What good to have you here. We cannot Glad wait to, here. to, to really here. get into this conversation here. And we also have the fantastic Angela Deaton, AngelaDeaton.com. And she is a lender that is amazing. And she's great. One of the best for first time home buyers. She is the lady with the plan. So tell us a little bit about you. Um, I am uh, Angela Deaton. I'm with Prime Lending. Um, we are headquartered here in Dallas. Sorry, within the mic. Um, and um, I've been with um, in the business for about 15 years. Yeah. Um, kind of all different niches, but really do enjoy working with first-time home buyers because it's such an exciting time for them and um, such a rewarding experience when they move into their first home. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I, I just want to get into a little bit of news here. The Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Can you believe how awesome the Cowboys are doing, Stephen? They're doing good. They're doing, <laughs> w would we expect anything else, though? No, Let's we knew it. Here, we right? knew it. We're all fans now, right? That's right. <laughs> um, we've got Pack with that stiff arm really doing a great job. We really appreciate him. They're on a buy this weekend. They get the, actually get the weekend off because they won like three games in 12 days or something like that. Crazy. <laughs> we'll so, give them a break. Yeah. They deserve it. They got a little break. But I did want to say congratulations to the Cowboys and to Dallas. We, we so It has been like 20 years, you know, <laughs> since we've actually done well. <laughs> and we've, we've, been, we've been cheering them on for 20 years. But then it was finally like, we really need to see something good. And so exciting. finally, it's here. We're here. We're going to the playoffs. You know we can win the Super Bowl with, with if everything goes well. So I'm very proud of you. Um, I also found out a little bit of information about um, the Trump tax plan, which, is, which has to do with homes. Um, now, I don't know if this is verified, you know, if this is real news, fake news, but I did check it at several sources, okay? <laughs> and the Trump tax plan, which we know is to simplify taxes, but we don't really, I mean, he's not even in an office yet, so this is just speculation. But from what I understand, they're planning to put a cap on the homestead deduction, which is an interesting thought. You know, granted, they're going to be lowering taxes, but it looks like they're going to put a cap on it. And that, oh, we've got a caller, we've got a caller. <laughs> Which doesn't surprise me because we're so wonderful. 214-787-1190. Hello, caller. It's actually your personal trainer. Oh, it is. Wonderful. Hi, Aaron. 
He's not there? I guess. Well, I'm Aaron, right where did you go? Are you here? I'm right here. Hey, man, what's up? Hey, what's up with you? Well, I'm working out lately. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you are? Where? I, wor- I I'm, at the gym. I, well, I've been at the gym. I just haven't been at your gym, but I have. Ah, uh, you're cheating on me. <laughs> I'm cheating on you with some other weights. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to hunt them down. How you been? I've been great. Thank you for calling. What's your question today? Well, what are you guys talking about today? We're talking about real estate. We've got credit sure. repair people here um, that are talking about uh, credit repair, coming first back, time first-time home buyers, things like that. All right, so here's one for you. This will probably be a question people deal with, especially this time a year, and I'm speaking from experience. What does, some, what does one do in a situation where they have had to go through a foreclosure because of an IRS tax lien, and they're in the process of rebuilding? What do they do? If, what does a person do if they have a tax lien and they want to get a home? That would they've, be a question. Well, they've, 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 got, they've got a foreclosure. They've got a foreclosure. They, they, they lost their home due to an IRS, IRS tax lien. And they lost their home due to an IRS tax lien how long ago? Uh, been five years ago. And has the tax lien be, been rectified? Uh, yes. Okay. And I think there's a way you can get that off your credit. So, yeah, so just to... To repeat the question uh, for our Facebook Live listeners, the, the question is, is what do you do if you've lost your home due to a tax lien and it was foreclosed? And really, that would that would also be kind of a joint answer here with Angela as well, because, right. you know, it depends upon the underwriting guidelines. From a credit repair perspective, you may or may not be able to get around something as, as detailed as that. I mean, if you've there's certain hard stops that if you've had a foreclosure, you know, regardless of the lien, whether it was a tax lien or any other foreclosure reason, for X number of period of time after that, the, the underwriting guidelines would prohibit it. Now, there's certain things you can do to, to try to improve your credit overall, but if, if that is on your credit report and it's accurate, then you may have to wait the period of time. Now, that being like three said, years, and that would be a question for, for Angela. Mm-hmm. What's, what's the period of time right now for you know every every program has a different waiting period for derogatory events. Um, you know, and it's different. It's different for a short sale versus a foreclosure. But speaking of, of foreclosures, um, the general rule with Fannie and Freddie is seven years. But um, if you have extenuating circumstances, which can be you know a, a severe illness or a death, and you know, something like that, then it can be as little as four. Um, FHA is three. So there's all different, you know, VA is even can be shorter than that. So it just really depends on what loan program you're looking at, what the reason for the foreclosure was, um, and kind of talking to a lender and putting together and knowing exactly what your waiting period is. Now, now one thing I'd like to add to that, just changing the scenario a tad bit, if you've got a tax lien on your credit, but you don't have a foreclosure, one of the things that that we can help with is we've got an enrolled agent on staff that can he's licensed to practice before the IRS and so we could actually help that person get on a repayment plan get right with the IRS so that in that scenario even though there's no foreclosure if there are tax problems we can help work with the mortgage company and with the realtor to get them where they would be underwritable under that scenario so the answer is is it's not hopeless there are ways around it don't give up and just rent for the rest of your life get with a professional like Stephen or Angela or myself and we can help you to get a home and especially I, after five years especially after five years mm-hmm. and I promise that I will come work out <laughs> soon <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that you still have three sessions you haven't used Oh, okay. Well, Aaron is a wonderful personal trainer. His name is Aaron Garrett. He's like Mr. America. If you go to his web page, <laughs> go to his Facebook page. He's he looks like a he's eye candy. If you would like to work out and at the same time, <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, and also he makes you look great. So I really appreciate all your help, and I definitely need to get back in the gym. And so, well, Jenna, thanks. Jenna, I don't think you need anybody to help you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Know. you. Yeah. So. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. No problem. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Okay. So that was a great call. And that, you know, that's a situation where, you know, people have tax liens and tax issues. And you would be surprised some things that you can do now that you used to not be able to do whenever you have back taxes and, and, and things like that. There's some things that are actually 
dischargeable and and that you can get done. It right. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, obviously, we're not giving tax advice on this on this show. But <laughs> why? Uh, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Know, but you know, there's things that uh, you can. You know, certain types of debts can be discharged with the IRS, um, and and there's lots of different types of repayment plans that people can be put on as well. Yeah. And there's there's lots of situations and ways to negotiate something where. The lender, the lender just wants to see that you're getting right with your debts, right, Angela? I mean, at right. the end of the day, that's what the lenders are looking <clears> for. And so, you know, if you've got a fifty thousand dollar tax lien hanging out there, and it's just hanging out, right. you're not going to get underwritten. But if if you are able to get into one of those programs, uh, a payment you know, plan, a payment plan, a reduction of debt, something of that, where you're in some sort of a formal arrangement, right? Then that's what the underwriters are going to look for. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes perfect sense. And so the, the 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 key is is to understand that there is hope out there, and you don't just want to give up and rent forever. Because renting, we're going to talk about that when we get back from this break. How the advantages of owning a home over renting a home, because there are several advantages, and you don't want to be caught, you know, just throwing your money away on, you know, rent is getting high, and and you know the housing market is getting you know, high. And right now the interest rates are low. And so if you can find a way to purchase a home and get on that track, then you're going to have, you know, it's it's like a forced savings. So after this break, we'll talk about renting versus buying. Thank you for listening. She would seem really depressed. Got an act for beating himself up. She wishes that she was never born. And, and it was intimidating to talk to him sometimes because he just seemed so isolated by himself. She started talking about how she wishes that her life was over. And so I knew he had depression, but I didn't know it was that far. He said something to me about uh, killing himself. Tell somebody, tell an adult, a counselor, parent, whatever. It's a hard situation because you do risk making that person very angry and losing their friendship. What are you going to do? Let them destroy themselves? I I don't see much of a choice at all. It's definitely worth getting help even if you think you're going to lose a friendship because it's better to lose the friendship than the actual friend. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death among teens. For more information, contact the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention at 888-333-AFSP or online at AFSP.org. My name is Japal. Two years ago, I received a kidney transplant. When I was 21 years old, I started dialysis. And for seven and a half years, I was a patient receiving treatments three times a week for four hours each session. And man, it was hard. When I was sick, I barely had enough strength to walk across the parking lot going to the movies with my brothers. But after my transplant, my strength and energy came back and I was able to run around and play with my nieces and nephews, which is very important to me. Being outside and feeling that first sun on your face is just incredible. You you just feel the energy and strength back in your body. It's something that's just so unexplainable, but something that you appreciate to the fullest. Kidney disease affects so many people in the African American community. My kidney transplant gave me my life back. And by becoming a donor, you can help someone get their life back as well. You have the power to donate life. Be an organ, tissue, and eye donor. To find out how, go today to DonateLifeTexas.org. Sponsored by the Texas Department of State Health Services. Phone lines are open at 214-787-1190. Here's Jenna Ryan. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the show. Yes, our phone lines are open. We would love to hear from you. 214-787-1190. And we are going to be talking, I I promised you we'd be be talking about renting versus buying. What are the benefits? Lots of people are out there renting and afraid to purchase right now. You think the prices are so high. Um, the, the prices are high, I don't want to buy. Well, and, or it's a seller's market, I don't want to buy. Well, let me tell you, right now is the best time to buy. Even though it's a seller's market, that's why people are buying, because interest rates are at an all-time low. Now, I did read um, today that mortgage rates have surged 
at two years high, a two year high, which is like 4%, you know, 4.5. <laughs> Whoa. So low. I mean, I remember at one point when I was looking for a house years ago, it was 17% interest rate. Okay. Yes, I was around. <laughs> but anyway, the point I'm saying is, is that it's, it's now at two year highs, which is only 4.5%. It's a great time to buy, but I want to really ask Angela to give us um, some reasons why it's, why buying is better than renting? <laughs> well, I mean, there's, there's really a lot of reasons it's better. Um, first of all, you're building equity. You're, you're actually investing into something. So, you know, when you're making your monthly payment, every one of those payments is actually buying you, you know, something. You're going to have something in return for it at the end. Right. You know, hopefully, obviously, depending on home values and things like that, but that you would walk away with some equity. So you, it's, it's an investment. Right. Um, another thing is the tax benefits. There are a lot of tax breaks that favor homeowners um, versus renting. You know, the, the interest deduction, of course. Um, yes. Private mortgage insurance, if you have that on your loan, is tax deductible. You know, it's up to a certain amount. And, mm-hmm. um, and also property taxes are uh, tax deductible as well. So, you know, when you look at even if, let's say your rent is 2000 a month and you find a house and your rent, your house payment is going to be 2200 a month. Right. When you really sit down and look at it with all of the tax benefits and tax deductions and exemptions that you get to take, you're actually better off with the, not to mention that you have something to sell at the end <laughs> versus when right. you move out an apartment and you have nothing to show for all the money that you've paid in over that time. Yes, it's called, it's kind of, I heard it said like it's a, a forced savings account. Mm-hmm. You're actually saving. So even though property value, you know, it's property is expensive right now, people waiting for the market to turn down, why would someone want to go ahead and purchase now rather than waiting for the market to tank in Dallas? Well, you know, there's no guarantee of whether it's going to tank or not. I mean, I had people, you know, three months ago waiting because they thought rates were going to go lower. They didn't want to refinance yet because they thought rates might go lower. Or right. I'm going to hold off to buy because rates might not go lower. And now they're, like you said, we're at a two-year high. They're up probably three-eighths from six weeks ago. Right. So, you know, you just don't know. Are the values going to come back down? Who knows? Maybe That's they're going to continue to go up. So this could be actually a lower level than we're going to see next year. Um, especially with all of the growth that's um, that's in our area. There's so much growth, and that's what we're, we have some shows <coughs> coming up where we're really going to be talking about all the growth in the area. And you're right. I mean, I see proper. I mean, traditionally, property values have increased. They don't go down. And even in, in, in bad times, you know, you may be able to get a, a little bit better of the deal. But what I'm seeing is, like, I see a house will go one year it's 200,000 and then you a brand new home like a deer Horton and then you go back a year later and the same home is 230 exactly. and it increases in, in value by 30,000 in a year and I am telling you everybody's moving here we're in a hot booming economy in Dallas they've made it very wonderful for businesses to come here and the momentum of all these businesses that are that are coming here, everybody wants to be here, and so we've got that city line with uh, State Farm over there. We over there in Richardson Garland area, we have the um, billion dollar mile that's incredible. Every day, I'm finding out more and more about that billion dollar mile, which is in Frisco with the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, including Legacy West with some new incredible condominium residences that are coming, and all this restaurants and all these entertainment venues and Liberty Mutual and, you know, of course, Toyota, all these companies coming and it's just creating a bottleneck for housing. So you want to get your house now Mm -hmm. while you can. I think that there's also a big um, misconception with how much, you know, people think I could never afford a $300,000 house. I could just never, ever afford that. Right. They actually sat down and got an estimate. Um, and, you know, looked at the total payment, it may not be that much less than what they're paying in rent. So especially right. when you factor in some of the deductions. So, yes. um, you know, I think that's, that's a big mis- misconception. And I think also people um, assume they can't qualify. If you've had yes. anything, um, they think, oh, I had a bankruptcy, you know, three years ago. There's no way I could ever get a loan. That's well, the truth is it's, you know, the guidelines have been loosening up um, considerably over the past couple of years. And yes, you really can, um, you know. Or at least get on a plan that it's, it's going to take me a year till I can or a year and a half. But at least then you know when you can and you can have a plan for it. Right. Now, after 2008, things went, things tanked and everything, the regulations came in and you could barely get a house. You had to put like $9 million down <laughs> in order to, that's an exaggeration, in order to Just get a, a house. Bit. You had to have like 850 credit and you had to be amazing. Okay. 
but things are loosening. Things are loosening up, and 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 that's just you know the nature of real estate. Um, and and now I read today that the FHA limits are now going up a little more. And I, I'm going to ask Angela about that. Okay. Well, the the FHA um, limit is is up in the metroplex. You know, every county and and surrounding area is different. So, um, but ours is significantly higher. You know, even three years ago, I believe it was at 271, and we're up to you know 362. So Woo. there's a lot of a lot of big difference in growth there on the FHA. But the big news um, that really came out about 10 days ago was the um, Fannie Freddie conforming limits raised. Yes. Um, we have been at 417 since 2006, 417,000. Um, and that went up to 424,100. So it's just, you know, a, just a sign that growth is in, prices are going up, you know, down payments, more programs. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier to get qualified for a loan than it was, you know, like you said, definitely five years ago, but even even two years ago. Okay, and that's only for Dallas. So that's specific to Dallas. So those are Dallas rates. The the FHA one was the um, the conforming the Fannie Freddie conforming limit. That is nationwide. That is the nationwide four twenty four one hundred is the limit across the nation. Now some areas outside of Texas have <laughs> higher limits, like California, Virginia. They may have a high balance conforming. You know, it's a higher a higher number. But for our con, you know consideration right here locally, we're four twenty four one hundred. Wonderful, wonderful. That's wonderful to know. Well, you guys, our phone lines are open. If you have any questions for Angela or Stephen Palmieri, just give us a call at 214-787-1190. And um, let's, let me just get into some credit questions here. What is the best credit you can have, Stephen? Well, in general, it's considered to be an 850 credit score. There generally is considered to be an 850. There are different ways of scoring credit depending upon the type of loan you're trying to get. But 850 is typically the best. And okay. From a score perspective. Now, if you talk to the underwriter, they may say, well, hey, all you need is a 20, right? A 720 or a 760. Okay. Okay. So what is the best, what is the credit you have to have to get a loan, Angela? Um, well, you know, every program is different. Um, obviously, for like a jumbo limit, it's going to be a higher score than needed for FHA. But I would say across the board, pretty much the lowest score you can have to qualify for any kind of a program is a 600. A 600 is your lowest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whenever you say jumbo, what do you mean? Jumbo is, so the limit I was just talking about, the 417 that we've had since 2006, now jumbo would be anything, or at least in 2017, um, jumbo will be considered anything that is higher than 424,100. Got it. So if this, if your loan amount is higher than 424,100, even if you're 424,200, you then have a jumbo loan. And you have to have what kind of credit for a jumbo loan? Um, jumbo loan, there there are some different programs, but generally speaking, it's higher. Probably about six sixty is the minimum. Um, typically, there are some you know crazy programs out there where you'd have a much higher interest rate and you can have a lower credit score than that. But in order to get a decent you know um, interest rate and a good program, usually you're going to have to be about a six sixty or six eighty. Okay, wonderful. If you're not a six sixty or six eighty and you want to be, what are some of the things that you can do, Stephen? Yeah, that's a really good question. You, first, you want to start off by looking at what is it that you have right now to work with on your credit. Okay. And so, do you have credit cards that could be paid down? Getting those balances down to a below around 25%. That's a great way to do a short-term raise in your score. Do you have relatives or somebody that has a well-seasoned card that they can put you on potentially as an authorized user? A lot uh. of people don't realize it, but credit card companies will allow you to put really anybody on as an authorized user. And this is somebody who doesn't have any of the obligations to repay the debt, but they have okay. the ability to use the card. So if you have somebody with a 20-year-old 50,000 limit Amex with like almost no balance. Right. That's a lot of history. It's a very mm. well seasoned card. And and that can help your ratios as well. And Does that so, have to be a friend or can it be a friend or family? Well, it, it can be anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to try to start off with the people close to you. Hopefully if you have a, you know, a relative, brother, sister, parent, uncle, somebody like that. Right. That <laughs> can do that for you. But it technically can be anybody as long as the credit card authorizes the authorized. And they just put you on the it. card and you go buy something and give that person money for whatever you bought. Yeah. And in this case, you wouldn't really be using the card as an authorized user. Oh. It's just really working the process. Mm -hmm. And so wow. you would get placed as an authorized. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So you yeah. just you get placed on somebody's card and then, you know, maybe you have an agreement with them that you're not going to use it. Um, it's between you and them. But the credit card companies don't care. They're, they're either going to put you on or not. How and much will that raise your score? 
Well, it depends upon your starting point. I mean, if you don't have much credit, it can it can put you into the 700s. If you have a history of derogatory items, right. it would have a much less uh, significant improvement. Okay. So part of it is we have to take a look and see where your starting point is. So if it's no credit at all, you're going to benefit by getting attached to someone else's credit card. Exactly. That's going to yes. help your card. But exactly. if you have negative derogatory credit, it's going to help. Would it help you at all? It, it could or it may not, depending upon how recent and the severity of the derogatory credit. Now, if you have derogatory credit, what you want to do is look at it and see if anything is inaccurate. There's a lot of ways to identify inaccuracies. Something that we can help with is our expertise in the industry, being able to look at credit data mm -hmm. differently than the average consumer may understand it on a more technical level. Right. And things that are inaccurate are allowed to be disputed. And the credit bureaus are supposed to either correct the information or remove it from your credit report within within 30 days. So another option is to find things that are inaccurate and, and try to get those corrected or deleted as well. Very interesting. So how long, if you do get that credit card thing, how long does it take to actually affect your credit? So as soon as the next reporting cycle for the credit card company, then it'll go onto your credit report. Okay, perfect. Great. Well, now we're on to our next break. We've got Angela and Stephen Palmieri today, and we are really learning a lot about mortgages and credit and first-time home buyers. So come back to us in just a minute. With this black man with black hair. I'm a third grade teacher. I'm a school bus driver. I am a parent. I am a teacher's aide. And I agree to be identified as a caring adult who pledges to help bullied students. I will listen carefully to all students who seek my help. And act on their behalf. To put an immediate stop to bullying. I will work with other caring adults to create a safe learning environment for all the students in my school. In my school. In my school. In my school. I'm Dennis Van Roekel, president of the National Education Association. Help us create safe, bully-free learning environments for all students. One caring adult can make all the difference. Be that adult and take the pledge at nea.org slash bullyfree. Adults have the power to stop bullying in our schools. It starts with me. It starts with me. It starts with me. It starts with me. Bully free. It starts with me. Visit nea.org slash bully free. A message from the National Education Association. Do you really know the score regarding your personal finances? Your credit score, that is. Many consumers tend to sit on the bench and don't have all the facts about personal credit reports. But the National Foundation for Credit Counseling wants you to get in the game, review your credit report, and understand how to improve it. Federal law entitles you to one free credit report from each of the main credit reporting agencies each year. And ordering just one is not enough. You need to see if there are any differences among the three major credit reporting agencies. Fixing mistakes can go a long way toward improving your credit score and improving your financial health. You need to request the reports either online, by phone, or by mail. And again, they're available free of charge. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling can help request your credit report and explain what it all means. Their certified counselors can also advise you on sound financial practices that can help improve your score. For more information about credit reports, call the NFCC at 1-800-388-2227. This has been a public service message from the NFCC. Welcome back to the Jenner Ryan Show on Talk Radio 1190 AM. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us here on the Jenna Ryan Show. I am Jenna Ryan Realtor with REMAX Dallas Suburbs. And I have two wonderful guests here with me today, Angela Deaton. She is a lender with Prime Lending, and as well as Stephen Palmieri. He is with Innovation Finance. He works with people to fix their finances. So we're getting some really good information today about first-time home buyers and credit, people that have had derogatory credit, things happen, and, and we're just really getting into this. So now we're going to talk about the benefits, or what is a first-time home buyer? So a first-time home buyer, a lot of people, you know, uh, think it is somebody who's just never, ever owned a home, and that's not the case. It is somebody who has not owned a home in the past three years. So in the past 36 months, they have not earned, um, owned a home. 
Um, and there are some, you know, deviations from that. Like give an example of a family where um, they had a mortgage, um, husband and wife lived together. The husband was on the loan. The wife was not on the loan. But because Texas is a community property state, you know, they're considered an owner. The wife is considered an owner of the home. Right. However, Fannie Mae says in that circumstance, she could go qualify as a home first time home buyer because she actually was not, you know, uh, on the note for that purchase. So okay. there are some, you know, it's always good to talk to somebody because there are some deviations from just the strict 36 months. The important thing is, is the reason that we even bring this up is that there are benefits. There are things you can get if you're a first time home buyer that you can't get if you're not a first time home buyer. So basically what Angela is saying is that you can get, you can take advantage of these benefits, which we're, we're going to talk about in just a minute, but there's advantages. So you don't even have to be a true first time home buyer. If you haven't owned a home in three years, you can mm-hmm. actually qualify for these first time home buyer benefits. Is that what you're saying very true and if you've been married and just because you were on the note Mm -hmm. or you were on the tax rolls because it's a community property state doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot qualify for a first-time home buyer that's correct now is that if you weren't on the loan itself but you were actually just on the the contract that's right oh okay right so if you were on the title but you weren't on the note then you could qualify as a a first-time they call it a displaced spouse so. Okay, fabulous. And so now tell us a little bit about the benefits of being a first time home buyer. So, as a first time home buyer, you know, first of all, there's a lot of down payment assistance programs out there. And a lot of these programs people don't know anything about. Um, almost every, just to give an example, the city of Frisco has a down payment assistance program. You wouldn't, you know, you don't see a lot about it. I had never seen a lot about it till someone told me about it. But if you Googled first time, home buyer, down payment assistance, Frisco, it comes right up. And you can get either a $5,000 grant um, to buy a home or a $10,000 grant, it, just depending on your income level and things like that. So in that, you know, they basically make it, you know, you have to buy a home, obviously, in the city of Frisco. Um, and you have to be a first-time home buyer. And then there's some other stipulations. Like for that specific one, you have to either be a teacher or a city worker or something like that for the city of Frisco. So I'm just using that as an example because almost every city has something like that where, you know, it may be that it's limited to city workers. It may be that they have to be teachers, but in every case they have to be first time home buyers. So that's that's one thing they're really targeting is is the first time home buyers. Okay. Um, on that. And so how do they contact you if they want to find out if they qualify for the first time home buyer benefits? You can go to my website, which is www.angeladeaton.com or yes. um, my number is 214-738-5874. Yes, contact Angela for to find out if you qualify for that first time home buyer grant or down payment assistance. Mm-hmm. Now, this is going to kind of switch to Stephen, I think. So I'm going to switch the we're, <laughs> we're online at, at Jenna Ryan dot one on Facebook. <laughs> so we're, we're live on Facebook live. So we've got viewers and listeners and it's it's, it's really cool. I love this. This is fascinating. Um, and we're going to talk about how to save for that down payment for those first-time home buyers. How do you save for that? What is What are some of your ideas for saving for that first time? Yeah, so that's an important part because obviously the first thing is if you're going to buy a home and you're a first-time home buyer, it's way different than renting or leasing because there's a lot of expenses that are going to come into it. And so your ability to properly save for that down payment really is, is more than just saving the money. It's kind of getting you mentally into the into the f- frame of mind of how are you going to be able to get on a budget, right? Because, you know, what happens when something goes out and you've got that roof or the air conditioner or the hot water heater that you have to replace? Right. So being able to save for that is an important step to having a good home ownership uh, over the duration of how long you have it. So there's some ways, you know, getting a good budget is where I would suggest everybody starts with that and take a look at where you spend your money and Mm -hmm. how much money do you need to have down and is your income fixed or is it variable, right? Are you on some sort of a performance-based income or are you just on a a W-2 where you you know what you're going to make and it's pretty fixed? Right. The other thing in addition to saving and getting on a budget is can you make more income, right? Pick up some extra yeah. shifts, pick up a second job. And this is a conversation we have with people because right. it's an important part of your finances. Sometimes people look inside the box and they're like, well, this is what my budget is. Mm-hmm. And and we've got, you know, there's a, a disconnect between my income and my expenses. Right. And there's only two ways to get around that. Number one is to reduce your expenses. Number number That's number one. Number two is to increase your income. And right. so- if you look at your budget and you say, well, it may take me two years to save up for this down payment, 
well, what could you do to make it a year, right? And getting extra income, picking up a side job somewhere is a good way. You know, if you're really anxious and you want to be able to get into that house earlier before, let's say we were talking about the billion mile, the billion billion dollar dollar mile mile up in Uh Frisco. You know, there's a lot of residential real estate that's going up in value significantly over there. Oh, yes. So let's say, you know, you don't want to wait two or three years to save up the down payment. You want to get it within the next year. Yes, getting yourself on a budget is a super important and cutting costs, but also, okay, what can you do to bring in some extra money as well to be able to shorten that time frame Absolutely. and to take advantage of the good market that we're having right now? Absolutely. I want to just jump in on that real quick yeah. and just say, um, as far as down payment, um, you know, saving a down payment, I just want to remind everyone, too, that you can get a gift for your down payment with can almost you? most programs. There are a few programs where you have to put 5% of your own funds in, but um, just keep in mind, you know, if you are, like like Stephen said, trying to find a way to get in quicker and, you know, you can get a gift from a family member um, to be able to kind of accelerate that process, knowing that, you know, you're going to, um, you know, have, uh, obviously have the money to make the payments and everything, but just to help you get in a little quicker. Well, what's your opinion on this, Angela? Is it better to put your cash, like let's say you have 20, you know, you have 20% saved in the bank. Mm-hmm. Is it better to put that down on your home or is it better to just keep that money in some other form would you would you recommend putting it all on your house how, how, how what do you recommend you know I think Dave Ramsey would definitely disagree with me <laughs> <laughs> really? but um yeah I am um, here's what I would say is if you um if putting down that 20 percent means that you're going to have to run up your credit cards um charge things that normally you could use money that you had in the bank to pay for okay. then I would say put down less because what do you want would you rather have a four percent tax deductible interest rate fixed rate mortgage, or would you rather have 22% on your visa that's variable and you have minimum payments and you've got interest rolling every single month that you can't deduct, that's not tax deductible. So in that case, you know, with that argument, I would say put down. Now, if you just have it there and, you know, you want to put down the 20% and it's not going to affect your other spending or credit cards or anything like that, then put down the 20% because it does, you know, get you out of mortgage insurance and, you know, would get you a little better interest rate and things like that. So... Okay. And then there are down payment assistance programs, which we already discussed. Yes. But that's with first-time home buyers. Can, is there down payment assistance programs for just regular people? Not mostly. Um, there are a few programs that are for um, like policemen, firefighters, um, different things like that that don't require you to be a first-time home buyer. Um, most of them do gear around um, first-time home buyers. But again, it's, it's something you can, you really can get out there, Google it, depending on where you're wanting to live. Um, Google it and look at the programs out there. The one thing I would say is, you know, um, the TSAHC, which I always butcher, but the Texas State Affordable Housing Corp, Corp, they have a great number of programs um, for, you know, everybody from first-time home buyers to community workers, um, things like that. So, um, you know, talking to a lender, like we we work very closely with the TSAHC. HC. We do it in-house. So we don't have to, you know, in some with some lenders, you have to get underwritten with the lender. Then you have to mail out a packet, oh. go through a whole nother process. So it's an important thing. It's not something that once you put a contract on a house, you can all of a sudden go, oh, hey, I think I found this down payment assistance program I want to tap into. Oh. It's something that you should probably, as you're starting with your realtor, go, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm looking in these areas. Let's see if there's any uh, down payment assistance programs that would benefit like me. Like the USD... A. USDA is a great, is a certain area that, um, you know, there's mortgage credit certificates, MCCs that some people qu- um, qualify for that you can add in. So just a great thing to, as you just start the process with your realtor, start the process with a lender at the same time so that you can find out what things are out there for you, what can benefit you and how to tap into everything that you might qualify for. Absolutely. Okay. Tell, let's talk a little bit about the debt to income <laughs> ratio. Mm-hmm. How does that work and how much debt should they have and how much should they be concerned about that? How, how do you look at that? Well, you know, um, people have different schools of thought on that. There's, um, there's programs that will allow you to go up to all the way up to 60 percent um, debt to income ratio, like a VA loan, for example, or FHA is higher, obviously. Fannie, 6% Freddie. 6 percent debt to income ratio. Um, 60. They 60. will allow you to, but I don't recommend that. That's not okay. I recommend. Okay. I think everybody needs to look at, you know, if, if really your house is your only expense and mm-hmm. you don't have, you know, child care, you don't have uh, expenses that aren't on your credit report, <clears throat> things like that, then going a little bit higher is fine. Um, I just always counsel people, don't get house poor. Don't buy your absolute maximum amount to where, like I said, you find yourself charging things that you can't afford now that you've bit off more than you can chew with your house, and you end up putting yourself in a poor financial position. 
Okay, wonderful. Let me ask you about credit repair. Stephen, over here. Um, tell us a little bit about, are, th are there still three credit reporting agencies? There's three main ones. There's actually a lot more than that, but generally there's three that the mortgage companies and, and that your typical credit agencies look at, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Okay. And what they are, they're for-profit companies like anybody else. Uh, a lot of people have a misconception that they're part of the government. That's not true. No. Um, they're regular companies, and they just gather information about okay. your your payment histories, your mode of living, your character, things, relationship things that you've had on a business level, a lot of times with your creditors. Um, but they also have credit bureaus out there that have employment information and insurance information. But for, for the, the purposes of what we're talking about here, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion are, are the big three. Mm -hmm. And it's important that you, you monitor these. And right. that way you can, you know, if you're looking, if you're thinking that you want to get into a house in the next six or 12 months, right. the worst thing you can do is think that you've gotten everything ready, not reviewed your credit, pick out the house, and then try to get pre-approved and find out that there is some sort of a surprise that you didn't know was there. Absolutely. So there's a lot of ways where you can keep your finger on the pulse. One of them is annualcreditreport.com. Oh, you're okay. In, you're entitled to one free report per year. Okay. And by getting that, you're able to check it and make sure that everything is accurate on there. Well, does it hurt your credit if you keep checking it? When you check it on your own, such as with Annual Credit Report or any of the monitoring sites, it does not. Oh, okay. Very interesting to know. Well, that is, y'all are so informative. I really appreciate <laughs> y'all's information. This is great. And we have a break coming up and come back to us. We're going to talk more about credit repair and first time homebuyers. With this black man with black hair. Every day, millions of Americans are putting themselves at risk just by writing a check using a credit card or an ATM. We're talking identity theft. And that's why the National Foundation for Credit Counseling has compiled a list of tips to help reduce the risk of having your personal information stolen. Never give out personal or account information when responding to a phone or email inquiry unless you initiated the transaction. Open your credit card and other bills promptly and reconcile your receipts and accounts. Just because your credit card is in your wallet, it doesn't mean you're not at risk. Skimming or stealing credit and debit card numbers is a huge part of identity theft. If you've been a victim or think your personal information has been compromised, you need to act immediately. The identity theft recovery process can be long and daunting, but you don't have to do it alone. Contact a certified counselor at the National Foundation for Credit Counseling at 1-800-388-2227, who can guide you every step of the way. This has been a public service message from the NFCC. What if you got rewarded for every good decision? What if your heart had a special way of letting you know it appreciates your healthy choices? Oh, I've got to get my family to eat more vegetables. Amazing! And instead of cooking with butter tonight, I think I'll saute our veggies with a heart-healthy oil. You're a genius! So really, would your food choices pay off in heart health? Did you know that when you replace bad fats with healthier fats, like those in canola or other vegetable oils, it can lower bad cholesterol levels? And that's good for your heart. Here's a winning idea. Take up the challenge for good health, because the you of the future will say, Fantastic! Learn more at heart.org slash face the fats. Canola Info proudly supports the American Heart Association's Face the Fats campaign. back to the Jenna Ryan Show. Hello, welcome back to the Jenna Ryan Show. I am Jenna Ryan, realtor with Remax Dallas Suburbs. I serve the Plano area and uh, as well as North Dallas. I sold a home in Forney the other day, <laughs> Garland. <laughs> I sell all over the place. Uh, Frisco, Prosper, McKinney. These are my beats. This is where I sell. I, I'm from Dallas. I've lived here. I was born downtown Dallas in Baylor Hospital. Family for many generations back. I'm a Dallasite. I sell homes and I, I list homes and I help first time home buyers and all kinds of home buyers. And I work very closely with Angela, who is a lender. 
And so if you're interested in purchasing a home, what you would do is call me, Jenna Ryan. Just go to JennaRyanRealty.com, and I will get you connected with Angela. And then Angela would run your credit and work on, on your credit part and work on your financing. And if needed, we would pull in Stephen, who is also a guest here today with Innovative Finance. He's, a, you know, the financial fixer. <laughs> and, and so we all work together as a team to really get you the best home. I work on finding the home. Angela works on finding the financing. And Stephen works on fixing everything if necessary. <clears throat> and so we would love for you to contact me at JennaRyanRealty.com with REMAX Dallas Suburbs. One thing I want to jump in just real quick on, um, you know, the importance of checking your credit with a lender um, yes. is Stephen mentioned, you know, pulling your annual free credit report, then that's a great idea because there's a lot that pops up on there and it does not negatively impact your credit. But I just want to caution people that is not the same exact scores that a lender is going to pull on a tri-merge report. So I have people right. all the time, right? My FICO.com said I have a 720. How do I only have a 690? And it's just because it's a different scoring system a little bit. Okay. Um, so it's important to, you know, to talk with a lender and get a, a report pulled. And um, there are so many things that I've seen happen to my borrowers who think I have excellent credit. They'll tell me I have excellent credit. Right. And it could be that their grandfather has the same name and they have <gasps> something that pops up. You know, they're a third, a junior. We see a lot with that. Interesting. Um, we see th some things that are just flat wrong, you know, um, don't belong to them. And like Stephen said, you can go and dispute it. Um, one thing I'll caution people, there are some shady um, credit repair agencies out there, not like Stephen no. who you, I would recommend, um, but who will go in and basically they'll just dispute every single derogatory thing on your credit report. Huh. And so your score goes up, which is great, until you get to me and then I tell you you're going to have to undispute it all because – um, Fannie and Freddie don't allow you to close with the disputed item. So just something All disputed to, items? Um, unless it's legit, like you can prove that it was not yours, like it's not your social or your name doesn't match or, you know, the agency won't respond back and, and verify it. But just going in and disputing them all okay. does raise your score. But right. unfortunately, when, you know, you go through the underwriting process, if it isn't a legit dispute, meaning it's not completely erroneous, you, we have to undispute it to give a more accurate score. That is so interesting. Just, just I didn't keep know that. In mind. That bites a lot of people, and it, it, it takes a while to undispute, so it can really delay the loan process. Okay, now my next, I want to know, so um, a lot of times people are maybe going to one lender, and then they want to go to another lender, and they want to go to another lender. What are the rules on that causing dings on your credit? <clears throat> Well, from a, um, from a lending standpoint, if you have several inquiries in a short period of time, like you're looking for a house and you do want to talk to a couple of different lenders, right. um, that's not going to negatively impact your credit. What negatively impacts your credit is, you know, this credit card, I went to Gap, I went to Home Depot, I went to JCPenney and so-and-so, because you could technically open four credit cards in 30 days. Okay. You're probably not going to buy three houses in 30 days. Right. So that's kind of why it's a bigger hit to um, shop around or have inquiries from credit card companies and things like that. Okay. That's interesting. So uh, now let's move on to the next thing, which would be once you get a loan, what are some of the things? Well, let's first ask, what do you do to prepare for a loan, getting a home loan? Um, so, you know, I'd say at the beginning, like I said, right about the time you're, you know, choosing your realtor, I would say, which is good, going to be Jenna. Yes, um, me. <laughs> then you would, um, you know, meet with a lender um, start the beginning process of, what can I qualify for? What does my credit look like? What, how much down payment am I going to need to have? Um, all of those things. And then, you know, any lender, I know I do this with my clients, is I will give them a list of things not to do during the loan process. That was my next question. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Um, we have seen, I mean, you know, some of me and, and my lender friends will tell stories where we just one up each other on the craziest things that people have done during the process. You know, they right. bought a car the day before, you know, don't husband, do that. No, do not do that. Do not do that. Don't open new credit cards. I don't care if gap has a hundred dollars back. If you spend a thousand, if you open a card to do it, <laughs> right? because we're going to have to add it to your credit report. It takes time. You know, it can just really delay the process. So, um, you know, I have a list of do's and don'ts that I give people at the very beginning of the process and tell them, you know, follow this religiously until you close on the house okay. so that you don't, you know, cause yourself any any despair during the process. What are some of the things that they should not do? Um, well, like I said, don't buy anything significant. You know, don't go buy a new car. Don't go, you know, 
um, buy a, you know, I had somebody buy a, a motorcycle, you know, don't do that. Um, and don't open a lot of credit cards. Don't open any if you can, but definitely don't open several because we're going to have to, you know, pull all those cards, add them to your credit. Um, and lenders now do have a system. You may think, oh, I just opened that, you know, two weeks before closing. It, it won't even have time to pop up. Well, we have a process, most lenders do, I know we do, where it will come up and it will, it, you know, basically it'll pop up during the loan process and we'll have to, and it'll say, this, your borrower had this trade line come up that is not on their credit report. And then we have to ask them, you know, did you open a gap? And usually, you know, it's funny. It's sometimes the husband's like, no, I don't have a gap credit card. And I'm like, can you call your wife and call me back? Because right. you probably have a gap credit card that you don't know about. Right. Um, so what are some of the worst things um, that that people can have on their credit that will really negatively impact the process? Well, uh, um, any kind of a lien or a judgment um, is going to attach to title. And therefore, you can't close with those open with the exception of, you know, like um, Stephen was saying, if you have a payment plan with the IRS, that's a little bit different situation. But liens and judgments are things that have to be paid off before you can close because they will attach to the title on the home and a lender's not going to allow that. Um, collections, you know, things like that. It just depends how new it is, how much it was, what loan program you're on. Um, so I would say the absolute worst things are liens and judgments. Obviously, foreclosure is is the biggest ding of all. Um you know, bankruptcy, the, they've loosened up a lot on bankruptcy, depending okay. on whether it's a 13 or a 7. You know, you can you can actually buy a home while you're in bankruptcy. Really? You just, yes. You just have to have permission from the bankruptcy court. Um, you know, you show them That's your finances. That's amazing. Yeah. So as long as you're in good standing, and I actually have a loan going on just like that right now. That God bless a, America. Chapter 13. <laughs> she's been in it for two years. She's made perfect payment history. And during that time, her income has gone up. She got married. Um, so now their family income has gone up and she's a veteran. So um, wow. she, you know, qualifies for a VA loan and the, tr and the bankruptcy court gave her permission to buy up to 250000 So, Okay. And so I know for a fact that you don't want to have any late house payments on your current no. house. No. That is like one of the worst things that I've seen that you can do. Yes. And on rentals. People don't um, take that into account that if you don't own it, you know, if you are a first time home buyer, just kind of bring that all back in. If you are a first time home buyer, and you've been renting, people may think, oh, it's not going to show up. Your, you know, your lease doesn't show up on your credit report. Your monthly rent with an apartment complex doesn't show up on your credit report. Oh. But we're going to ask for a verification of rent. Okay. Um, so, you know, again, depending on the program, some programs don't require that, but most of them do, and, and especially with a first-time home buyer. So if you've been late on your rent two times in the past, it may not negatively impact your credit score, but it's going to impact your underwriting approval because it's the same thing. It's a housing payment. So whether it's, you know, whether it's the, um, you know, a rent or, or a buy, you know, your actual mortgage that's on your credit report, mm -hmm. a VOR showing lates on your rentals can be just as damaging. So let's say you get someone with um, some issues on their credit they need to work on, and we send them to Stephen. Mm -hmm. Stephen, what would you do to help someone? What would be some of the first steps you would take, and how would you help them? The first step is to find out what their end goal is. Okay. Because you know, I mean, everybody... You can look at credit reports, and even positive items may not be reporting as accurately as they should be. Okay. So you really have to find out what is the end game. If it's to get a mortgage, if it's to get a it's jumbo to get a mortgage. mortgage. You know, that's the first thing is do the analysis there. And then based on what the issues are, put together a course of action. And so as we talked about before, paying down debts, maybe getting on some new credit, and looking for inaccuracies and trying to get some of that inaccurate information either corrected or made positive. One of the things that Angela said a few minutes ago is that rent – does not typically report on credit reports. There are third-party companies that you can pay a small fee to. One of them is called Rental Karma, and they will actually go and report your rent to at least one of the three major credit bureaus. Interesting. That's good. So, I didn't know that. You know, so lenders can take your information that's not reporting, and they can kind of you know manually figure it into the deal, but it doesn't help the score. If you need to have some of those items help the score, there is a way that we can help the clients with to get like rent reporting on the credit report. And so you figure, just knowing how to put all the pieces together and to work with the realtors and the mortgage companies is an important part of it. And we were talking earlier about how if you have too many items that are showing in dispute, that could kick the underwriting guidelines. You know, one of the things that we do is we work with our referral partners and the people that are responsible for the end game. In this case, getting a mortgage is the end game. Right. right? So we're going to put a plan together with the, the real estate professional, with the mortgage person, 
And so we're really just an extension of what they're doing in this right. process. We're part of the team. Right. So there's no unexpected surprises coming in into the situation. Well, that's very important. Right. We don't want unexpected surprises <laughs> in this whole process. And I, I, and then you come back to me once you've gone through that. Then you come back to Jen Ryan Realty. And then we go find your house. And we have to find you a house somewhere that is as close as possible to your work, <laughs> <laughs> which is the difficulty. You know, you have to be prepared to drive a little farther if you want to get a home, you know, if you're a first-time home buyer, generally speaking, you're around the three hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar range, and depending on on the range you're in, then we just move farther out. Or there's a few homes around that you can get into um, that are wonderful, and and I'm so excited. This show has been a really great show today. I'm 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 thrilled to be a part of your lives every Sunday and and to come on and to help to provide interesting information. And so also you guys can call at 214-787-1190. And um, I'm excited that we're going to be having in the next couple of weeks, Angela, can you believe it? We're going to have Phil Ulcer. Awesome. He is the ex-mayor of Plano, which is wonderful to be able to have him on the show, as well as we're going to be talking a lot about the Billion Dollar Mile that's coming, which is all that stuff in Frisco. And we have Victoria Snee marketing director with um, Legacy West. Have you been driving around the tollway and looking over there and seeing all that new construction at Legacy West? So we're going to have that. And then the week after that, we're going to have all these moms. It's going to be like mom day. (laughs) Mom day. I guess I won't be invited to that one. (laughs) You won't, but you're definitely coming back, Stephen. I really appreciate your input. And Angela, of course, you will be back. And I can come on mom day. Yeah, you could. You're a great mom. We really appreciate you. Um, and thanks for listening. The Jenna Ryan Show on Talk Radio 1190 AM. For more information, contact Jenna through Facebook or email at JennaRyanRealty at gmail.com. Join us again next time on Talk Radio 1190 AM for The Jenna Ryan Show.